Where's the autopilot on button? <laughs> You're the autopilot. Autopilot on. I'm John from Fly 8 Mike Alpha. CFI turned airline pilot turned back to CFI. Come along on my journey flying Alaska to Florida and beyond. Last time on Fly at Mike Alpha, Steph and I blasted off out of Soldovia on up to Soldotna, grabbed some gas, and then shot across the bay over to Chinitna, this cool little beach where you can land, walk around, check out some amazing brown bears. And after seeing some really cool bears feeding on grass and clams, we decided to go ahead and get out of there as the tide was coming up, fly up through Lake Clark National Park, up through the mountain pass over Crescent Lake, and then shot up north to Talkeetna, where we hung out for the night grabbed a little Airbnb in these little cabins here, and then got some sleep so we could blast out the next morning nice and early back to Anchorage. Zero, zero, Zulu. Wind, one nine or zero at four. Visibility one zero, ceiling 9,500 overcast. Minute That's a nine. lie. Yes, Cessna 296 Delta, ready to taxi from transient runway one nine or with Papa. November 2962 Delta, South Radio, good morning, no reported traffic. Roger, 6 to Delta, good morning. Talking on traffic, 6 to Delta, we'll be entering 1 9 or departing southbound. Lake information, Charlie 1553, Zulu 1040 at 3, weather better than 5005, temperature 14, dew point 12, altimeter 29 or 72. West Stratton News, landed morning west, runway 32. Notice to airmen, contact Lake Tech Tower on 128.65. Lies on initial contact, you have information travel. So the west route means that, so the corridor that we have basically for Lake Hood coming from the north yep. is this area right here. So it's Point McKenzie yep. right here, and then the boat hole, which is like this little dock that sticks out right there, basically. Okay. So the Anchorage class Charlie airspace is just to the right of the boat hull, and the Merrill class Delta is just to the left of the point, so you stay right between them at 1200 feet, and that keeps you in Lake Hood's class D. 6 to Delta ballpark. Number 6 to Delta, runway 32, clear to land. Clear to land, 32, 6 to Delta. So after swinging to Anchorage, we went ahead and dropped off Steph. She had to go be a real pilot for the day and go fly around in a 206. And I went ahead and got to play the part of tourist wandering around Lake Hood, which is basically just a 24-7 sun and fun or oshkosh of seaplanes. It is the world's largest seaplane base, and it is just literally a kid in a candy store is how I was walking around there. Awesome place, beavers and otters on floats, pregnant-looking Cessna 185s and just totally cool airplanes everywhere you looked. You can just kind of basically hang out on the lakeshore and watch airplanes take off and land all day, and the seaplanes are super cool to watch, especially like this one right here, who tried to take off but was a little heavy and didn't quite have enough speed to break free of the friction from the water, and so just kind of did a little step taxi around the lake, a little plow turn, and then carried all that energy and finally got off just in time, got a float off, and was able to clear the trees you can go over to the lakefront lodge, sit down, have breakfast or lunch, watch the airplanes coming in and out all day long. A few hundred airplanes every day coming in and out. So just an awesome place to be an av geek like myself. Eventually, unfortunately, Steph started calling. She wanted to go fly out to another very cool place, out to the Knick Glacier, and go try to land out there if the weather would let us. So we went ahead and wandered back over to the strip of Lake Hood, away from the lake, back over the strip and shot out the 170 out to Kinnick. Lake Hood Tower, Cessna 296 to Delta, holding short one four with Romeo North departure. And there's a cup. Number 2963 Delta, Lake Hood Tower, Roger, flying traffic. <laughs> oh, Hi. wow. That's windy. Uh, yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Man, this wind's really kicked up. <laughs> 
Uh, Delta, runway one four, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff one four six two Delta northbound. Roger, November six two Delta. Well, you know what I love about this? What's that? Oh, there's gonna be no takeoff roll. <laughs> How do you read minds? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I love about it. <laughs> it's fun. And so we're going out at 900? Yes. Cool. And uh, and then we try to be right on Point McKenzie. Okay. And you see the boat hole? Is that little dock there? Yep. So that's our corridor. That's your corridor between the point and the boat dock yep. thing. All right, so we came in at 12. You go out at 9. <laughs> you can see there's a barrel right there. You know where my sandwich is? On the horizontal. <laughs> well, not anymore, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I might have made a little rookie mistake and left my sandwich on the top of the wing right when I was checking the fuel caps before we took off, but the options were either go back and get food or keep flying towards a giant glacier. Palmer, Alaska. Automated weather observation 0111 Zulu. Wind 130 at 20. Peak gusts 27. <laughs> Visibility one zero. Palmer is always condition, few, ridiculous. Thousand scattered. Niner thousand. Wow. Peak gust two six. Nice. Yeah, you got this. Look at all that ice blocked up there too. And look at how the current yeah, good, has brought all that those chunks. Those are all massive. Up. All those are just chunks. Oh yeah, totally. Narrow pass. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it look very so inviting? It does look inviting if the winds were less, you know, 40 knots less than they are right now. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Pretty freaking crazy. OMG. Holy yeah. From what I'm seeing, you've got... 500 and 1,000 in here, but as soon as you get down this way, I don't think there is a pass going through there to get to Girdwood. Or Good. Girdwood. 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 Yep, yeah, I can say that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there's a pass unless you're doing like 5,000 feet or 2,500 there. No, I mean, it's just, 2, it pops up so steep. with these clouds, like, I think, what are we, we're 2,000 feet right now. We're going to have to be probably at least four or five to get through there. And I think you might wind up in the clouds on the other side as you come up to this next glacier. So unfortunately, due to the wind, we couldn't really land at the picnic strip and get out and walk around. And due to the clouds all around the mountains and glaciers, we couldn't really fly through any of the passes to get onto the other side to Girdwood, but flying around sites like these, I certainly was not complaining either way. And that's why we took full tanks. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, because we got another three and a half, four hours to sort this crap out. <laughs> hey, at least on the way, if we go, go back to Anchorage the same way we came. It's going to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> And sure enough, as soon as we did turn around and start heading out of the pass, 
yeah, our ground speed picked up quite a bit. The guys on the ground down by the picnic strip were calling it somewhere between 40 and 60 knots is what they thought it was gusting to. So really good thing we didn't bother trying to land the picnic strip. It's on our list to go back to. We will get there one day. We will go walk around. It is an amazing place. And either way, that flight was absolutely insane. As you can see, the glacier, the ice, just the entire landscape is incomparable to anything else. And as you guys know, pictures and video just do not do it justice. You really have to go there for yourself. If you ever get the opportunity, it's the Knick Glacier, K-N-I-K. Go check it out. It is well worth the flight wherever you are in the world. So after we got rattled around for a while getting out of there with all the mountain wave turbulence and all the mechanical turbulence from the wind blowing across the hills, we finally made our way back towards Anchorage for a nice gusty crosswind landing. Good information, Tango, 0153 Zulu, wind 180 at 13, gust 25, visibility 10. Six to Delta, mid channel for the strip. <laughs> six to Delta, runway 14, clear to land. Clear land 1462 Delta. Why do they always think you're 63 Delta? Two, no, 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 no. Do I say, like, oh, like does it sound like 63? No, no, you talk quiet. Yeah, no, no, Juliet, channel. Well, so then, uh, Juliet, right, or run uh, southeast, clear to land. Okay, we're clear for the southeast, no, no, Juliet. Now, some people might think a 2,200 foot long runway is pretty short, but when you got over 20 knots, pretty much right on the nose or over a 20 knot headwind component, 2,200 feet becomes pretty long and you got a long time to float over the runway and sort it all out. Mind you, when they call it gusting 25 in Alaska, there's just something about Alaska. That gusting 25 is a lot more like gusting 30 or 35 down in the lower 48, it seems. Nice job! Touching down at a ground speed of 29 miles an hour. Once we got back to the parking spot, we realized just how incredibly quiet the airport was, aside from the howling wind, but everyone else had pretty much packed it in for the day, just due to really crazy gusty conditions. So we were able to have somebody give us a hand, strap down the airplane, get it back into its parking spot, and then call it a night. We headed home and started flight planning for our very next adventures. Coming up next on Fly at Mike Alpha, we head out to Glacier Spit right across from Homer, find this awesome little hiking trail, hike on back to this private secluded little beach overlooking this amazing glacier, get some awesome footage, and then head back on over to Soldovia and start making all the preparations for the upcoming fly-in in just a few days. But of course, what would a flying vlog be without more flying, playing around the mountains, playing out on the beaches, and of course, even practicing some short field, take off some landings for the upcoming stole competition. You have arrived at your destination. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this video and our channel with your friends, and we will see you all in the next episode.